Welcome everybody, welcome to Claydesk. Let's talk about the audit manager in AWS. What it is, how do you request access to AWS audit manager? What are some of the restrictions? And more importantly, what are the prerequisites or dependencies to using the AWS audit manager? So I'm gonna cover these four important areas regarding AWS audit manager. So let's dive right in. So the AWS Audit Manager helps you continuously audit your AWS usage to simplify how you assess risk and compliance with regulations and industry standards. So the Audit Manager simply automates evidence collection to make it easier to assess if your policies, procedures, and activities are operating effectively. Now, when it is time for an audit, the Audit Manager simply will help you to manage stakeholder reviews of your controls and also helps you build audit ready reports which is pretty important with significantly less manual effort so that's really what audit manager is all about let's now take a look at how it actually works so the audit manager simply once again continuously audits your AWS usage to simplify how you assess risk and help you in compliance. So first is selecting a framework. So you can select from a pre-built framework which includes controls or you can create your own custom framework. In other words, define your parameters. Next is defining the scope itself. So for example, you can specify the in-scope accounts and services in a region for your assessment. So if you're in, let's say, the Virginia region or the US East, US West, or whichever region you're in, you can actually define the scope uh, differently for each region. And once you do that, next is of course, it activates the assessment to continuously gather the evidence from that particular region. Now the audit manager conducts automated evidence coll collection like I mentioned earlier, right? And it also conducts control reviews or you can delegate the resource owners to validate those evidence collection. Now, once all of this evidence is collected, you can then simply identify the root causes. For example, you can take a look at what's causing uh, something to fail, for example, or is a, a security risk or is a non-compliance issue, for example. And you can filter and group your data to simply dive deeper into causes of non-compliance, which is helpful. So it kind of reduces the manual efforts or rather eliminates all of your manual efforts and AWS Audit Manager does the job for you. And finally, it generates the reports. So you can present the reports to stakeholders. And these are audit ready reports, assessment reports with links to evidence. So it's not just findings, but it actually findings that are supportive of whatever is happening at the back end. So this is how the Audit Manager works. Now there are many common questions and one of the questions that I like to highlight here is how do you actually request access to the audit manager within your AMS account, right? So you can request that access to, through the submission of the AWS services, RFC management, for example, or AWS service or compatible services, right? Through this RFC, the following, for example, the IAM role will be provisioned in your account. And you can see it's customer-audit-manager-admin-role. That's the account that will be provisioned, that's the IAM role. Now, once that is provisioned in your account, you must onboard the role in your federation solution. So this is how you would request the AWS Audit Manager within your AMS account. Another question is straightforward. What are the restrictions to using AWS Audit Manager or any limitations to this? Well, there are no restrictions for the use of Audit Manager in your AMS account. It's fully functional for your AWS Audit Manager that you can actually use. So there are no limitations to using the AWS Audit Manager. And finally, I'd like to talk about what are the prerequisites or dependencies to using AWS Audit Manager. So there are about four. The fourth one will be an optional, but three dependencies that you need to take care of. First is you need to provide AMS with the S3 bucket where you want the reports assessment to reside because you need to have a, a place where to put your reports in, right? So that's straightforward. You need an S3 bucket. Two, if you want to have an encryption with the service, then you need to provide the AMS with the key management service keys, right? Or KMS or CMK, ARN to use. 
okay now this is only if you want to use or have things encrypted within the service and the third requirement or prerequisite or dependency is if you want to send a SNS notification to a topic you then must provide the name of the topic or the a resource name right or the ARN and then the fourth is optional so for example you can if there's an additional prerequisite if you want to enable organizations as part of your multi-account landing zone in audit manager then you would want a delegated administrator account so in the description field for example for RFC management or a WS service or the paddle service add right you can mention that you want to use the delegated administrator account as part of the audit manager setup and then provide the, the details and the details are simply yeah, you need to provide the KMS key the CMK or ARN right used to set up the audit manager initially and that's the key you want to use and of course you can also you need to also specify delegated administrator account ID for audit manager to use as part of the multi-account landing zone and that can be MALZ application account right so these are the prerequisites or the dependencies to use with the AWS audit manager so once again in a nutshell audit manager simply helps you to continuously audit and that's the key word this is important because it continuously audits your AWS usage and simplifies how you assess risk and compliance with the regulation and industry standards hope this helps let me know if you have any questions with this. Let's move to the next lesson.